Hello! In this episode I'm going to be talking about swimming textures where basically a texture doesn't stick to an animated object. Now for this demonstration I've got different types of animation. It may not be absolutely every type of animation but I've covered the ones which um, are more likely to come across. If there's any types of animation which I've not covered let me know in the comments below. Um, hopefully the solutions in this video should apply to those as well but also, if they don't, I want to make sure I can cover those as well. So here we're using a Maxon noise and the objects swimming through that texture. What we're going to be doing at the end of this video is basically showing you how to get those textures to stick. I'm also going to be covering um, triplanar and a texture with a different projection type to UV. So it'd be something like cubic and how to get that to stick as well. So to begin with, I'm going to cover transform, which is basically position, rotation and scale, but for this demonstration I'll be talking about rotation. So if I go into here, and I'll just hide the other objects for now. So here we've got transform or rotation. I'm using a triplanar at the moment. We scrub through, it's stuck on nicely. And if I do the same with the noise, it's stuck on nicely. So why am I covering this one if it's working? Well the reason I'm covering this is that it hides issues that were demonstrated before. Because as we scrub through here everything looks fine when in reality we have this issue lurking in the background. So you may have actually encountered this issue before without actually realizing. Now this can happen in cases well, in quite a lot of cases, but the most notable one that I've found, or the one which prompted me to do this video, was with character animation. Because if you've got a character, and you've built it, you've textured it, you've added a bit of noise, maybe a bit of triplanar, just to add some finer details to the character, and then it comes to rigging the character with a joint rig, and then doing some pose morphing with the facial expressions, and maybe using some deformers for um, some features of the body and all of a sudden you're encountering this issue and this is something you've not factored into um, the workflow to address so you know I, I wanted to highlight the fact that this is kind of like the silent killer um, so yeah transform it works but just be aware that it may be giving you false um, readings basically so let's move on to the problem cases so Oh, and one thing to note is that this um, cylinder is using a subdivision surface. I'll cover why that's important in a second. So let's move on to bend deformer and joint rig. And as you can see, the noise material isn't deforming with the objects. So that's the noise. We're swimming through the noise texture. And if we use triplanar, same thing again. We're swimming through the texture. Now the main culprit with these is basically a subdivision surface, which is why I mentioned it before. Because if we turn these off, and I'm going to use the noise first. If we scrub through, you can see the noise is sticking to the objects. So that's the first issue. Um, to resolve. So if we still need deformation or subdivisions, sorry, if we still need subdivisions on the object, what you can do is go into render tags, press shift object, under geometry, override, and then enable tessellation. That way we get the subdivisions and the textures sticking as desired. So that's great, that's a nice texture fixed. However, if we use triplanar, it does actually fix part of the issue, but we still have texture swimming. Now, in order to resolve this, all you need to do is go into the triplanar node, under projection space type, change it from object to reference, and now it sticks. It does still encounter the same issue as the noise did when it came to the subdivision surface, so bear that in mind. So to fix both the noise and triplanar, we need subdivision surface disabled and you'd have to use redshift object tags if you need subdivisions. 
but for the tri planar you also need to have reference checked on. So that's how you fix those. That's great. So let's move on to point level animation. Turn these on. Okay, so all of these are literally functionally the same. It's animated points, um, each of the points are keyframed. However, I've got two different use cases here which are more likely to encounter. The first one, I don't think I've ever really used point level animation in any, oh, I can't think of any use case scenario where it's actually been of use. Um, whereas Pose Morph I've used um, for facial animation before and Alembic for baked character animations. So covering those because you're more likely to encounter those forms of point level animation. So if we scrub through with Triplanar, we've got the swimming textures and if we use Max on Noise, we have swimming textures. Now, as you may have noticed in the viewport, they're not subdivided and that's because I've already jumped ahead and applied Redshift object tags to subdivide the objects. So we're already using Redshift object tags and the triplanar was already using reference and yet both the noise and the triplanar weren't sticking to the objects when they were animating. This is a bit of a tricky one to fix and my solution for this is a little bit of a hack. I do have a second one which I'll be talking about towards the end um, which is what covers the um, different projection mapping of a standard texture. But my first less destructive um, answer would be to use a mesh deformer. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a copy of the object that we're using. It's just a basic cylinder. I'm going to call it mesh. So just show you what it looks like. It's just that cylinder. It's just not animated. I'm going to get three copies of that. One for each of the animated objects. And what we're going to do is use these animated objects to drive the animation of these three um, copies that I've made. And I'll explain why once I've done it. So I'm going to get one under the Alembic. And I'll just zero out the transforms. I'm going to get one under the pose morph. And I'm going to get one under the standard point level animation. And then I'll just drag them out of the um, out of their parents just so nicely in line with their groups. Okay, so if I scrub through, we can see that we've got the animated objects underneath and then these clones which we've just created now. So with the clones what I'm going to do is select them all whilst holding shift and click and hold on the deformers panel and release on mesh. So that's created a mesh um, deformer as a child of each of those new meshes that we created or new objects. So what we're going to do is one by one go through the mesh deformers set the accuracy to 100 and the external to surface area and then drag the objects that we want to reference. So, oh, actually, make sure that they are lined up first, then hit initialize. Then I'm going to do the same with this one. Initialize, and then the last one, same thing again, get the reference object, and initialize. Now we can hide the original point level animated objects and when we scrub through we have these new objects that we created being deformed and we want to make sure that we've got the redshift object tags applied to them as well so they get deformation. Now this works and I'll explain why because if I scrub through you can see same as before but the textures stick in and if we use triplanar, same thing again, texture sticking. So why is this working and not the point level animation? The thing is, now we're using a mesh deformer, we're basically using deformers rather than point level animation. And as you saw before, 
we're using the solution that we applied to the bend deformer. So by using a mesh deformer, we can basically bypass dealing with point level animation and deal with um, a deformer instead. So I don't want to go too far into the technical details because I was trying to grasp this myself um, from what I could read from the documentation, but I think the issue stems from um, the noise texture and triplanar struggling to get it, the right information from the points of the object. And that's why when it came to subdivision surfaces that ends up um, creating issues because it, it seems to break that connection between the information that the textures need um, in order to work properly and in order to get into function. Yeah, starting to fumble my words there, but basically it's something to do with um, the points of the object. So by using a mesh deformer, we bypass the issues caused by point level animation. Now, there may be a scenario where you can't use that for whatever reason. And the solution which I'm going to propose is going to be the same solution as what I'd use for a different projection mapping type. So I'm going to cover that. And this solution should apply to all of the examples that I've used so far. So I'm just going to do this on the bend deformer just because otherwise I'm repeating the same process over and over. So we've got our cylinder here with the bend deformer. Now this is looking fine. However, if I go into the projection type, if I set this to cubic and I plug in a texture directly, so here we go, we've got this texture applied and it's swimming. So long as the object is editable, that's a key part, what you can do is right click on the tag and click generate UVW coordinates. And it's going to ask if you want to include a sub-object in which in this case it doesn't matter because you've just got a um, mesh deformer so it doesn't apply. I'm going to say no. Either answer I don't think would really matter. But what this has done is generated a new UVW tag so if I scrub through now, you can see the texture is stuck on. And the projection type of that tag is now also set to UVW map mapping instead of cubic. If I move this material tag to the left of this UVW tag, we end up with the original um, UVW mapping. So. This, I think, is quite a good solution because it's still non-destructive. You, you still preserve your previous UVW tag and you get a new one for just this um, texture. However, if you need to use the previous, um, you know, if, you, if you've got different layering of textures and noises, that's where this solution may not work for you. But if you're dealing with different materials on the same object and they're completely separate, then you may be able to use this to get around any issues around that sort of scenario. Anyway, hopefully uh, I didn't waffle on too much there and you managed to get some sort of sense out of what's been covered today. Um, yeah, I hope this has helped. If it hasn't, let me know in the comments below because I know it, it may have been a little bit confusing. Um, if there's anything I've not covered, which you think I should have covered in this video, let me know. Otherwise, I hope you enjoyed the video and hope to see you in the next one.